popping in on us then, right? <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they're inside to be here with us. Uh, as we uh, gather together today, I want to offer greetings to uh, everyone here, to guests, to members and visitors. Uh, we're all uh, 
privileged and blessed to be able to come before the Lord and receive his gifts in word and sacrament. We begin with our first hymn, hymn number 412. Please rise. on page 203 in the front part of our hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read together the intro and found on page 3 of our worship folder. 
I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he who and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not eat himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They, they shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will tell of your name to my brothers, in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Testament reading for the third Sunday after the Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 9. There will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he was made glorious the way of his seed, the land beyond Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell 
dwell in a land of deep darkness on them as light shining. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken on this day, broken as on this day of Midian. This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistles from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there be no divisions among you, but that you be, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it's been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Cephas and Gaius, so that one that so that one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for reading of the Holy Gospel. of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee 
and the Decapolis, from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 207. We confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 856. Now 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Old Testament lesson says, The people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. Those who find themselves living in darkness, in deep darkness, on them a light has dawned. That darkness is no surprise to us as well. Sometimes our day is darkness, our life seems like deep darkness, and yet we look for the light of Christ that, appears, that is shown to us through Jesus himself. Really, we're going to be looking mostly at the uh, New Testament lesson here. As the light has come through Jesus into Matthew chapter 4, it even quotes this Old Testament passage from Isaiah 9 even quotes that saying, see, there in Christ the light shines into the world through him, and people see him as someone worth following. They see him. They recognize who he is in their life, and they follow. They see what he does. All of those miracles at the end, he healed the sick, he healed the paralytic, the, the epileptic, he cast out demons, he did all of this good deeds, uh, all of this to draw their eyes to see and recognize him as the one who has come, the great light in their darkness and in ours. The people who walked in darkness have seen this great light. The people who live in the land of deep darkness, even in the shadow of death, Matthew 4 says, in them has this light has shined, and they have joy and rejoicing in this light. Having Jesus appear in our lives, having him dawn on you with the light of Christ, shine on you, brings great joy and great comfort. To go through our own shadow of death, wouldn't we want to know that we have the light of Christ with us? This joy of seeing the one who can heal, who can restore, who can bind up the brokenhearted, who can do these great things, cause the paralyzed to walk, cause the epileptic to be free from that sickness, who can heal these great diseases, who can cast out even demons and darkness, who shine in their lights. There is Jesus bringing us the joy and rejoicing of knowing the one whom God has sent into our lives. We want to follow him. But we get this idea from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that we get a problem here with these Christians in Corinth. They're wanting to be Christians, but now they, they're getting divided on who they should follow. They've got multiple teachers talking to them and teaching them, and they go, well, I like Paul. Paul's my guy. I'm a Paul guy. Oh, 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 well. Yeah, Paul's okay, but Apollos is really my guy. Apollos is another one that is named in the epistles as being a great Christian teacher to the churches. Mm -hmm. I like Apollos. He's better. His sermons are shorter. <laughs> right? uh, uh, I like Apollos for whatever reason. And someone else says, no, but he's not. Apollos is fine, but he's no Cephas. Cephas is the name for Peter. I know he's got too many names. Simon, Peter. <laughs> Cephas is the, the Hebrew name, or, or the Greek name for Peter. It would be the Hebrew name. Uh, for Peter. And you know, all that great, but mm, Peter's kind of the guy. Isn't he? Isn't he the guy, the one who comes after Jesus? There's Jesus and then Peter. And, you know, Paul came later. And then Paul, excuse me. Right? And then someone else says, no, you guys, Jesus. Now, Jesus is always the correct answer, right? I follow Jesus. But this could still be wrong if someone's going, I'm a Jesus guy, and your Pauls and your Peters and your Apollos are no good. Right? If still we have division in choosing Jesus rather than the teachers that Jesus has sent, the apostles and teachers. And uh, in 1 Corinthians, he's saying there should be no division. All of this is in Christ. Paul is in Christ. Peter is in Christ. Apollos is in Christ. We have the same thing, right? If we're going, well, I follow Luther. Luther would say, I'm just a worm sack. He had a great way with the German language. Uh, don't follow me, follow Jesus. 
And we would go through this too. If I looked back at the, the pastors at my home church, you know, if we picked favorites, is it Pastor Olmstead or Pastor Warren? Pastor Parks or Shields? Pastor Striper or Pastor Rodriguez? Who? No! Now they have this thing there at my home church, they have Team Jesus. And it's not because they had any problem with any other pastors, but it's just to remind themselves that they follow Jesus and that they are the ones serving the world with Jesus' command and permission. We are all on Team Jesus. We're not picking pastors to say, that's the one I'm going to follow. I'm not listening to the other one, even though God sent him, right? No. We're all on Jesus. We're all with Christ and in Christ. And why only Christ? Because pastors ourselves, we don't have anything worth sharing. We just share what Jesus has given us. We don't have anything of our own. And if we bring something of our own into it, don't follow me. Follow Christ. Because Christ is the one on whom, uh, who dawns on a great and deep darkness. Christ is the one who shines in the shadow of death and says, I am with you. Christ is the one who makes it clear that he comes into our lives. And that we don't divide it in our churches just over saying, I like a cult of personality. I like this person over another person. Don't go to church because of the person. Go to church because of the message of Christ. And what was Jesus' message? From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. From that time on, this was his general message as he began, after John had been arrested. See, if anybody was saying, John the Baptist is my guy, oh, the, the arrested and beheaded one, right? Uh, and so if anybody tried to pick favorites other than Jesus, they're, they're finding themselves getting lost in the weeds of teachings and not in the, the truth. And, but Jesus' message here is really the same message that John the Baptist was given to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, now Jesus is the kingdom of heaven, walking among you. At hand in the Bible means this is the kingdom of heaven right now. This is the kingdom that's available to you here. Essentially saying this is the kingdom of heaven that you can grasp. The kingdom of heaven is what Jesus brings into us. It is the reign and rule of Jesus Christ in the world and in your life. That's the kingdom of heaven. We're not looking for a piece of property all over there. Once I cross the line, then I'm in the kingdom. No, to be in the kingdom of God is to have him be your king wherever you go. And now, is this good news or bad news when Jesus comes along saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Does it make us happy or scared or sad or mad? Is this good news or bad news? It's supposed to be good news. It's supposed to be instructing them, but it might be to me bad news. Jesus is coming and the kingdom of heaven comes with him. Uh-oh might be a false thought we have in our minds because we might say i'm not ready at all for that kind of kingdom i'm scared that if it's about me and my what i've deserved or what i have merited or what i have accomplished uh, uh, i won't get into that kingdom. that kingdom's going to come and go and i'm going to be left without it i'm not ready at all we might say i'm not ready I'm not worthy. We might say, I don't want the kingdom of heaven that Jesus brings. This is a false thought as well, that many of us and many of others fall into thinking because we have designed our own idea of what the great kingdom should be, what we want to follow, and what we want to happen. We want the kingdom of me, the boss, not the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We want the kingdom of what I want and what I can get. I want the kingdom, falsely I might say, of Paul. Or I want the kingdom of Cephas, Peter. Really, remember, they bring no other kingdom than Jesus. But maybe I'm mistaken what message they're hearing. Or maybe we say without any faith in Christ at all, uh, someone might say, I'm, I want the kingdom of, I'm not interested in your kingdom. Don't bother me about this. Go away. I want a different kingdom. 
want a different ruler. Maybe I want a political ruler. Or maybe my heart's just set on following the celebrities and the fashions and the what's happening now. Maybe my heart would really just uh, rather worship at the heart of sports or hobbies and pay no mind at all to Christ. I want the kingdom of popular, the kingdom of fashionable, the kingdom that treats me like a king. I want the kingdom of this other voice, this other logic, these other, this kingdom of emotions or a different philosophy. Or maybe I just don't want Jesus. That's what happens in our world. That's what happens in our own hearts at times. Oh, this is a good time tomorrow for Jesus. Today, it can be about me. You might say that. And so Jesus says, repent. Repent of that. And that's why Jesus coming with the kingdom of God is good news. The kingdom, Jesus bringing the kingdom of heaven is a good thing. It's the kingdom of heaven, the reign and rule where Jesus is in your life. Jesus, the creator, has come to walk among his people. Jesus, the creator, has come to walk in his kingdom. To find the people in darkness, deep darkness, in the shadow of death, and to walk among them as a good light for them. This should be good news to restore the things that are in darkness, in deep darkness. And if you find yourself living in that deep darkness, we would want that light of Jesus to shine on us too. And he does. And that's why he cries out as part of his message, repent. To repent, to let him come, to change our ways. When he says, I'm near, I'm at hand, I am available to you, able to be seen and heard and touched and learned from as he walks among the people. I bring my kingdom, my reign and rule that is good and merciful and gracious. And so he says, so repent, turn from the ways and change the mind from the thinking that was chasing after other thoughts and philosophies and kingdoms. Turn from the ways and the, the thinking that was chasing after what I want to entertain myself right now. And see me, the light and king, walking among you. Repenting is seeking the Lord to help us do the change, to turn from the ways that are not God, to turn from the ways that lead only to sin, that lead only to myself or chasing after another God. Repenting is changing the thinking inside my own head to want and think what God gives in his teachings, to know and believe who his Son and Savior is in Jesus Christ. And repenting is seeking the Lord to be the remedy for all of my sins. There it is. There is Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God, the thing to turn to, the new way of thinking. There it is in Jesus Christ himself, the, the one to follow, the one who says, I bring my kingdom, my grace, my mercy, and my ruling in your hearts into your life. So repent. Look for those ways in which we say, that was not of God, but I did that and thought it and pursued it and chased it. God calls us now to seek Christ not follow someone else, but when he calls uh, Andrew and Simon, Peter and Cephas, he calls them and says, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. You'll help find other people who can follow. You'll help bring others into the kingdom of God. When he finds James and John, he says, follow me. And they too do the same. They see his call. They recognize who he is. They, they turn from their ways. And, and being a fisherman is not wrong and sinful, but they have followed the call of God to be, now be these disciples, to now be these apostles. There it is to follow Christ, to see him and say, I want to keep Jesus and his word in my life. I want to receive the gifts that he offers in word and sacrament, to, be those, to have those be the thing that I see and follow. He is the light. He is the one who has called to me, who has shined on me, even in the times of deep, deep darkness. 
when I felt like I was had the shadow of death hanging over every part of my life, there was Christ. There was Christ in his word calling out to me as well, saying, the kingdom of heaven is near you, is with you. Follow me. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. We rise now for prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of all nations, your Son became flesh to enlighten a world darkened by sin with his grace. Visit us with his gifts of forgiveness and life that our way may be glorious with his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty <clears throat> God, preserve us from divisions and quarreling wrought by false teaching and cults of personality. Fix our eyes on the word of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless the families of this congregation with your grace and protection, that they might remember you in both joy and trouble and worship before you forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, all kingship belongs to you. Rule over the nations for the good of your people, that we might live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, have mercy upon all for whom we bring before you in prayer. Especially we pray today for Gloria, Carol, Tracy, Terry, Lewis, and Ruth, for Phyllis, Marjorie, and Carl, for Walt, Bob, Joanne, Susan, and Gerald, for Ruth, Robin, Kim, and Caitlin, for Robert, Bryant, Elmer, Christine, and Brad, for Jim and Noah, Mike, Loretta, Peggy, and Lois, for Christine, Judy, Lisa, and Dave, for Isabel, Roma, Ron, and Beverly. Deliver them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, you are right. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful with all the faithful in the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive the offering. <laughs>
continue on page 208 with the preface. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper, you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, true land. 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen. We rise and sing the Nunc de Metis on page 211. <laughs> your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Praise be to God. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Our closing hymn is hymn number 643. <laughs> Thank you.
We welcome the guests and visitors that are here with us today. Um, to direct your attention to the announcement pages in the back of the bulletin, uh, just a few announcements, I think. Uh, the one is that the offering envelopes have arrived after uh, being delayed for a few weeks. So it's, I know sometimes we get used to, I had this uh, envelope number for months or weeks or years. Um, but uh, if you'd like an envelope back there, uh, a box of envelopes, just pick one up and then you can sign your name and then on the sign-up sheet just also write down which box number you got okay so that if you didn't if you don't have the same number as last year it's okay it doesn't bother me okay uh, that bother you. but uh it doesn't bother me uh, so just sign it out there if you'd like an offering box i know since you know the world broke in 2020 with COVID and all that uh, some of us have uh, just gone to more electronic giving or different ways, and so maybe the offering envelope is, uh, you know, not something you feel you need. That's fine. That's okay. Um, so to direct your attention to some of the other announcements here, um, just to highlight also our Wednesday evening Bible class. We just started it this week on the book of Ephesians. Uh, good, good, uh, wonderful part of scripture, as if there are any that aren't, uh, you know, some of them are harder. This is just such a beautiful uh, part of scripture to, to read. So we invite you to that Wednesday evening Bible class. Um, are there any other particular announcements? I've got one more, but are there any other uh, comments or questions or announcements at this time? In two weeks, uh, February 5th, uh, we're going to have a mortgage burning party. <laughs> so uh, I've I've never got uh, to be, be in a congregation when they were able to when they paid off their mortgage. Uh, so it just you know timing is a pretty rare thing. Uh, so we're gonna so in two weeks that will be a special part of our service uh, to 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 retire something with celebration. Bye bye, right? <laughs> uh, and, and so that'll be in a couple of weeks. Uh, we invite everyone to, to come and, and just join in that because uh, this is something that we've all been part of. If you've been a part of our congregation uh, for any time, we've been working on this for, I think, about 24 years is my general guess at, at the time of this. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication and faithful support from everybody. And, and uh, here it is. So, okay. So uh, that's in two weeks on February 5th. Uh, are there any other comments or announcements at this time? Uh, there's no youth confirmation class. The kids know that. Um, this is Lutheran Schools Week up at uh, Emmanuel Brandon and across the nation for all of our Lutheran schools. So this is their time where they really get to celebrate uh, the work that they do and uh, to showcase that to uh, their parents and grandparents and things like that. So um, we give thanks for Lutheran schools. It's been a great part of our Lutheran heritage in America. Uh, some places in the frontier, which is called Nebraska, um, the frontier, you'd set up a school before you'd set up a church. And the pastor would start the school, and uh, from that, the church would, found, would form. So, Okay, uh, so if that being said, we invite you to stay for the goodies and, and for the fellowship you have with one another. God's blessings on your day and your week. 